Hey guys, in this video we're going to be exploring another way of generating organic rhythm in a modular setting, which is especially useful when generating rhythm for multiple voices. This method is inspired by Dinko Klobuchar's comparator video, which you can find in the description of this video. Alright, let's begin. Alright, I pulled all the patch cables out of this patch and we're going to start from scratch. The basic premise for this patch is that one or more comparators are analyzing a waveform and passing out gates based on whether the waveform is low, middle, high, or whatever. Now, in my patch, I've chosen the hypermaniacal LFO as my waveform way I'm analyzing. The reason I chose it is because it is very maniacal. It is crazy. It is a bunch of LFOs modulating each other. And generally, the more complex the waveform you're analyzing, the better the results will be and the more uh, generative it will be sounding. It won't sound uh, repetitive or boring or anything. You'll get a lot of very interesting patterns when you analyze it. Here it is in the scope. As you can see, it is crazy. But one thing we want to do before we send the LFO to the comparators is to actually send it through some gain, a gain shifter, which is basically a VCA. And as you can see on the scope now, we get a much larger voltage range. This will give the comparators more voltage to work with, so we aren't stuck in a small voltage range and the thresholds will have to be a tiny little bit away from each other. That's hard to work with. This is much easier. So we're going to take the out of the gained LFO and into our comparators. As you can see, all the threshold knobs are at different positions. So they will go off at different points in the waveform. And as you can see on the lights, they're all blinking at different times because of this. Now, we could actually just stop the patch right here because we already have our gates and they're already kind of generating a pattern. So here, I'm gonna patch them into this matrix combiner, which is just a matrix mute system. Let me unmute these. And if I unmute these, oh, and then unmute our big mute button here, we're already generating rhythm. Just a little background on this patch. We have these comparators going into some mutable instruments plats, which are being sequenced by a sequencer with an analog shift register. I'll probably make another video on that in the future but the gates are being sent from these comparators. And as you can hear, very random sounding, generative, um, kind of pretty complex, and very interesting to listen to. And this is great. Um, you know, you, we could stop our patch right here and just work with this, but I wanna show a different method in this video. That's, you know, it has a little bit, a, a few more modules you need to put in, but it gives us gives us much more control over the final rhythm of of these comparators. So, I'm gonna unmute these, and what we have to do for this method is take these comparator gates and put them in a mixer. Now. The mixer is going to give us control over the level of these gates, which is really important. If we patch the output of the mixer into our scope, we can see we get something that sort of looks like our LFO, but it's much more squarish because they're all made up. The, the, the scope is, um, or the LFO is being turned into gates. And if we pull down some of the levels on some of these gates, we're essentially pulling down different parts of that LFO, like the, or the lower portion, or we're pulling down part of the middle portion or the upper portion, or we can put gain to it, and then we'll get very crazy waveforms. So this gives us a little bit more control over how we want the final rhythm to be. But, so yeah, we're gonna take the output of the mixer, put it into this A times B plus C module which is just an attenuverter and an offset. If we patch this 
to the scope, we'll see that we can, like I said, attenuvert it. We can basically increase the gain, or we can invert it, then increase it again. And we can offset it. So we can get it way down, we can get it way up. Very useful. Now we're going to put this module through another module, the last one, and that'll be going into a slew limiter. And all this does, it'll take the sharp edges of our squarish wave here and it will smooth it over. As you can see, as I increase the rise time on the slew limiter, here let me increase the gain a bit. We see a little, sh almost like a shark tooth pattern coming. And then if I increase the fall time, we get a more and more, a sort of triangle-ish wave. So as you can see, the mo these, these modules, the mixer, the slew limiter, and this attenuverter and offset give us a lot of tools to shape the comparator voltage. And what we're gonna do now we're going to take the output of the, or the slewed output, and put it into a sequential switch. And specifically put it into the CV of the sequential switch that'll be going through a bunch of gates. Because the output of a sequential switch is just a gate. And these gates, four of them, are going into our plats, which I can activate here. Let's see how it sounds. Oops. And then let me unmute it. It sounds similar since it's the same sequence from before. But as you can tell, the rhythm is different. And the hawketing between voices is different too. If you look closely at the switch, only gates 2, 3, and 4 are being activated. One isn't being activated at all. So the cool thing about the sequential switch approach is that we can also affect the hawketing of the four voices we've chosen. If I change the offset, now we're getting one, two, three mostly. If I change it even more, we only get one and two. So this affords us a lot of control over not only the rhythm of all four voices, but also the hawketing. So which rhythms go to which voice? And, you know, do some pl even play at all? And of course we can, we have so many parameters to mess with. Not only do we have comparator thresholds to mess with and the LFO speed and waveform, we also have our mixing console right over here. We have the slew limiting and we have this attenuation version and offset. We have so many controls over how we want this rhythm and the hawketing to play out. And another aspect of this patch that I'm not going to go um, into detail within this video is that sequential switches also have clock inputs. So we can actually clock this whole patch to an LFO so it's more in line with a drum pattern or something. And that's pretty much it for this video. This method is a bit temperamental. It's hard to get it exactly how you want it because you have so many parameters to control. Um, but I think it's worth it to mess with this a bit because you can find some really interesting patterns and some really interesting generative rhythm. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.